The Lord be with you. This morning, worship begins with this beautiful prelude. Grace and peace to you in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to welcome you to worship on this, the Lord's Day, and ask that those of you who are in the sanctuary that you might find the maroon registration pads that can be found in each pew towards the center of the aisles, that you would sign in and pass them down. If you're visiting with us by providing us with your name and address, it allows us to send you a letter of welcome along with a copy of our church newsletter so that you may learn more about the mission and the ministry here at Palmasia Presbyterian Church. I'd like to draw your attention to the bulletin weekly insert. It lists all of the announcements about the activities going on in the life of this church, including the concert that is happening here this evening and all of our Holy Week and Easter worship service times. So please pay, pay close attention to that weekly this week. We also have intercessory prayer sheets that can be found towards the entrance of the sanctuary. I share with you two changes. We pray for Jeffrey Hudson as he recovers and was in the hospital this week. And we pray for Clay and Katie Witherspoon and their family in the death of Clay's mom, Nor Norma Witherspoon. On this Sunday, it has been the tradition of the Palmasia Presbyterian Church for about two decades that on Palm Sunday, the worship service is a palm and a passion service, which moves us as a community of faith through Jesus's triumphant entry into Jerusalem to his betrayal, death, and burial. This year, we hear the narratives through the lens of the Gospel of Mark. The prayers and music are the primary interpreters of the scripture in this service and they prepare us to joyfully receive the good news of Christ's resurrection. 
Let us worship God together. Let us pray. Merciful God, once again we add our voices to the multitudes who across the ages have shouted Hosanna at the coming of your Son. Some meant it and followed. Some were simply there because it was something to see. Others would later add their voices to the ones that shouted, Crucify him. May our songs, may our prayers, and may our gifts this morning reflect our deepest desire to be more than spectators. May we truly be followers of your Son, the Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. When they were approaching Jerusalem, at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve.
even as the festival of worship begins with the palm parade and the adults and children come and choir together, children are welcomed on this Sunday. And I invite them to come and gather with me here by the baptismal font. And please welcome them by singing. Right here. It's good. morning boys and girls I'm glad that you could be in worship with us today we all are it makes worship better for us when you're here we're glad that you could help lead worship with us this is a special Sunday and you heard us call the name already Palm Sunday and I know you knew it was Palm Sunday because so many of you have palm branches that you're waving don't you yes the Bible story tells us that when Jesus came into Jerusalem, the people waved palm branches to welcome him. And do you know why they waved a palm branch? Because that was, <laughs> that was the sign by which they welcomed a the king. Kings were welcomed by the waving of palm branches. And some of them, even with their coats and jackets, they put on the road to make a carpet for him. And when they were waving the branches, they were crying out a word. Do you know the word they were crying? Hosanna. Hosanna is the word. Yes, Hosanna. Let's say it together. One, two, three. Hosanna. Do you know what Hosanna means? What does it mean? It does sound like hooray, doesn't it? It does sound like it. Hosanna means save us. They were, it's a Hebrew word, and they were crying out, save us, Jesus. They were welcoming Jesus and asking him to come and save them. Welcome is a part of what we do on Palm Sunday. And so we're going to welcome someone new into the church today in the sacrament of baptism. Baptism is our welcoming sign, and in that Palm Sunday tradition, we'll welcome here in baptism also. And I am glad that Lauren and Jordan Smith are here with their little boy for the sacrament. I invite them to come and stand with me here at the baptismal font. And we welcome the godparents who are with them and invite them to come too, Michelle Cunningham and Jose Rubio. It's a little bit of a path, but that's the nature of the day. Tom McKeon is coming to stand as an elder representing the session with them. And we welcome the grandparents who are here, Barbara Bachman, and also Aileen and Timothy Smith. What a lovely group of family and friends surround you now. When we gather at baptisms, we remember our own baptisms. Yes. When we gather at baptism, we remember that what Jesus did in the life and the death, what God did in the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus, he did for this little boy in particular. And so we pray as we share in baptism together. Thank you, God, for this sacrament of baptism. Thank you for the story of your saving promises. Thank you especially for Jesus Christ, how he told us to go and baptize all who come to be a part of his church. Now we pray that you would take this water and set it apart from a common to a sacred use and grant that what we do here on earth might be ordained in heaven. Amen. Lauren and Jordan, as you bring your son forward for the sacrament of baptism, I ask you if you're able once again to profess your own faith in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Are you? Yes. And will you seek to raise him in the nurture and admonition of the Lord? Will you seek to raise him in the Christian faith? Will you? We will. And you also have the opportunity to make promises 
as those who stand with them, a family of love gathered around them, as the representatives of the body of the Church of Jesus Christ across time and space and around the world. Can you add your promise to help pray for them as they raise this little boy? Can you lift up the example of your own character that seeing it, he might have it as a guide in Christian faith as he grows? Can you help to ensure that there exists a church in the world where he can learn the stories of the Bible until he comes to his own good profession of faith? If you can support them in this way, please signify that by saying, I will. I will. Good. What name shall be given to this child, his full name? Clark Jordan Smith. Clark Jordan Smith, child of the covenant. I baptize thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the Spirit of God descend upon thee and dwell within thee forever. This is Clark Jordan Smith, the newest member of Christ Church here today. <laughs> and you know, boys and girls, how we welcome him. We welcome him with singing, so let's sing together. Jesus loves me, this I know. Let us pray together. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. We thank you, Lord, for the life of this little boy, Clark Jordan. We pray that you'll enable him to grow in wisdom and faith and stature before you. We pray that you'll see him safely through childhood and adolescence. Bring him to his own good confession of faith. Give his parents and all who partner with them the gifts they need for the task of raising him. Give them patience, and energy, and laughter, and forgiveness, and wisdom, and energy, and faith, and hope, and love. And we pray not only for this little boy or the children here, so clearly surrounded by love, but for other children as well. Those who are in harm's way this morning, living in violence. Those who may be hungry or sick. Oh God, help them and use us as a part of your compassion reaching out to them. For we pray remembering how Jesus said, let the little children come unto me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. This is a wonderful thing that God has done. He is a sign of God's goodness to us. While he was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar, a very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. 
But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. And so he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. Jesus gave himself for the life of the world. With humble hearts bowed in awe, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Let us pray. Holy God, we give thanks for your saving love made known to us in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. Bless these gifts that they may bring life on earth as in heaven. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping the bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Jesus prays. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, 
I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little bit farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, and yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand.
Jesus suffered death and rose to glory for the life of the world. So let us lift up our hearts and thanks to God as we pray for the cares of the world. Let us pray. O oh God, you are our God, and we will offer you our praise our whole lives long, for your steadfast love endures forever. Our lives are in your hands, and we are grateful for your provision and care. Holy One, we raise our palm branches and lift our voices to cry Hosanna as we enter this holy week. Turn our hearts towards you, that we may follow you past the parades and into the shadows of betrayal, trial, and death. As we enter this week, strengthen us to worship you with our whole selves, for our cries of Hosanna will turn to crucify him, and our hearts break with that knowledge. Mend our brokenness and lead us to faithfulness. We offer prayers this day for people who are hurt by our greed, our judgment, our thirst for power. Help us to mend what we have broken, to repair relationships, to heal society. Hosanna, save us, Lord. We offer prayers for people in pain and worry and grief, those who face violence and our warring ways on a daily basis. Bring healing, comfort, and wholeness. Hosanna, save us, Lord. We offer prayers for the gift of your creation. Enlighten us to care for your world. Awaken us from our denial and abuse and help us to alleviate its suffering. Hosanna, save us, Lord. Hear our prayers for the leaders of the world, whether they serve large or small communities, cities, states, or countries. May they follow your path of peace. Give them wisdom and humility and concern for your people that they may heal the world rather than take from the spoils. Hosanna, save us, Lord. We offer these prayers in the name of the one who came to serve rather than be served, who was willing to take on the brokenness of the world in order that it might be made whole. In the name of Jesus, we pray, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Immediately while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked.
Jesus Before the Council, a responsive reading. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision?
As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. And now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. And then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him.
They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come back down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now with a centurion who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph and the Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where the body was laid. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.